Booze Shame in the Herald Sun exclusive. Darren back on the drink. He joins us in the studio. Good morning, Darren. Tony, good morning. You're Just back on the drink? Do you want a glass of wine? Well, uh, have you got one? No. I listen, I walk, actually, I walked to a meeting with Michaela Cash this morning. The first thing I said to her, I said, do you want a glass of wine? You know, and she said, oh, stuff like that shouldn't be on page one. I said, listen, I'm an ex-editor, ex-radio, television person. I ought to put it on page one. You're entitled. Uh, the answer to that is is no, not hence booze shame. But, uh, yeah, it, look, I'm getting a taste of, um, uh, how do I put this, a bit of bunny boiler treatment here. Um I was told I'll get you, and um, and my ex partner uh, has got me. Um, I should hasten to add very quickly as I walked in here. Uh, this is not my ex wife Chanel we're talking about here. I mean, the newspapers will be uh, television news tonight. I'll be showing me and pictures of Chanel. It was not not her. It's my ex partner Natasha, who was in Canberra with me for my maiden speech. Where, according to her tweets, uh, she was shocked that after my first speech I had a, a light beer. Now, I'll tell you, yeah, I have I have had a drink. Um, I drink watered-down wine. Uh, I, last Christmas, I had a glass of Grange, which I watered down, and that'll upset all the, the uh, connoisseurs. Um, she's wrong about the beer I drink. Uh, these are getting plugs to various products. I drink a thing called Cooper's Ultra Light, which you buy in the supermarket, which is not alcoholic at all. It's like a soft drink. And I usually drink um, Edenvale. I've got that in the Senate dining room and in the Hyatt Canberra. But occasionally I will get a glass of red or a glass of white and get a quarter of it wine and fill it up now with water. Um, How occasionally is occasionally? Uh, once or twice a week. Mm. Yeah, I'd have a glass, you know. Um, so I wouldn't have a... It wouldn't be one, one, be one full glass, I suppose, over three glasses if you add the water and stuff. So you're a weekly drinker? About that, yeah. For someone that's had a liver transplant? Well, yeah, but it's, I'm saying a weekly one glass of wine. Mm. One half, you know. Anyway, I... Uh, but, but the reason I, cleared, I say that, I, Darren, I cleared, is that... I cleared it with my, with my surgeon, Bob mm. Jones, and uh, he said, you can. 2008, yeah. you're talking to a, a forum here in Melbourne. Quote, I don't drink now, never will again. If I get a titanium liver, I still won't drink again. Yeah, yeah. Yep, I did say that, and I have. Yeah, so yeah, I have, I have had, had a drink since then. That's true. That's quite true. Uh, and I won't say I never ever. I wouldn't see you now and say I never will again. Um, I talked this morning to my donor's mother, Linda, and uh, and she said I have faith in you, Darren. I said, and and she doesn't mind. Other surgeons at the uh, Austin don't mind. Look, I interviewed Alex Best. Now, Alex Best is George Best's widow. George was a soccer player. I yep. interviewed her in London. Now, George Best jumped the queue to get a liver transplant, got picked up drink driving after 18 months, and was dead within two years. Well, I had a transplant five and a half years ago. Uh, I've just been elected to the Senate. I intend to be around for a long, long time. I feel fit. I feel good. And uh, if occasionally still, I, if you can come and check my glass and say, gee, that tastes, that tastes terrible, Darren. It's half wine, half water. That's it. You mentioned you spoke to the mother of your, your donor. Mm. Um, was that your greatest consideration when this hit the head? Lines. I mean, everyone's had their say in the media. Uh, other politicians will have their say. Your ex-girlfriend has had her say. Was that your biggest consideration? Yes, yes. I call. I, I don't want to drag her into it, you know. Mm. Um, and uh, and it's 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 ironic that um, that it had to be this way. You know, that I had to face up to that. I said, hell, hell hath no fury. Now, uh, this... and she's, she's got what she wanted to. Right. She'd achieved the fact of you know putting me under the spotlight and embarrassing me. Okay, so why has she done that? When, she was your girlfriend up until when? Um, two days ago. Okay. Can I ask why you split up? Um, it's ironic because she came, said, came to Canberra for my first speech and helped me set up the party and did all the website work and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to Sydney on the weekend to open the transplant games. I've opened them in Melbourne. I've opened them in Newcastle. I'm opening them in Sydney. Um, my ex, now ex, used to work for Transplant Australia. She felt that she walked out on them. She felt that they had betrayed her and that it was an act of betrayal for me to go and open the transplant games when she'd worked for Transplant Australia. It's that simple. And that was the catalyst to break up. That was the catalyst. And that was the catalyst to try and shame you. Yes. Yes. I I mean, up until then, it was a nice, loving relationship. I was uh, actually flying to Queenstown next Sunday night Mm. in New Zealand, but I'm not, obviously. There we are. So in in the it it, but, but in, in this bit here, because it seems like a, an incredible fall from where you were mm. a few days ago to where you are now. She says in a, a message she sent the chief of staff at Channel Nine, Kate McGrath. She says, um, uh, "I am not proud of it. Hurting someone you love doesn't sit well with me." So she loves you. Did you love her? Yeah. yeah. So th- this obviously hurts. Yeah. Yeah. More ways than one. Yes, it does. But it was. It, it, she's achieved what she wanted to achieve. You know. Matters of the heart, Tony, uh, get very complex and very complicated. Uh, I'll go on. I'll do my job. Um, we've had a 
great week in Canberra last week with the McDonald's stuff and that, and so I'm, um, I'll just keep ploughing on. We will get to that. And, 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 and look, you know, we had a couple of people ring up earlier and say, oh, you know, uh, this is all, you know, sort of, uh, you know, there's no need to air this dirty linen. But I did explain that you'd be the first person to... You're quite entitled. Yes, I would be. And you're story quite, you're on quite this. entitled. Yeah, yeah, yep. yep. So uh, it, it's just you are a public figure. You've been a public figure for the best part of fifty years. Uh, it just seems. Did did she have this characteristic about her to actually go you like that? Did you ever think it would sort of end like this? We've 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 broken up before, right. and it got a bit messy. Okay. Have you spoken to her this morning? No, I won't speak again. Text message? No. No me- no correspondence whatsoever. I won't, no. Has, has she made contact with you? Um. Yeah, yeah, I tried to, but... Remorseful? Um, what time is it? <laughs> I'd rather not go there. Okay, so she was remorseful? I, well, she deleted the stuff, so I presume okay. that shows remorse. Um, right. But that when it's in social media, it's there forever. Okay. Yeah. All right, well, it's, uh, it's unfortunate. I, I suppose the, the other thing, if you can have a little laugh about it, is that it's broken your perfect record because you always prided yourself on the fact that you continued to get on with every ex. This will be an exception. <laughs> yeah, this will be an exception. Uh, sadly, sadly. Yeah, you you you're really hurt by this, aren't you? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's not the it's 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 more the more the uh, personal relationship than than the front page headline. You know, I can wear that, but uh, yeah, of course it hurts. So you have no qualms at all uh, admitting to the fact that that you drink on a regular basis. Well, if you call if you call drinking. Uh, I say a glass of wine with uh, water in it uh, once or twice a week, regular basis. Then, yeah, I have no qualms. And your surgeon doesn't have a problem with no, that. No, he does not. Right. What about what about the people who are on waiting lists for new livers at the moment who are listening to this, thinking, "Well, geez, hang on, I don't bloody drink, and I'm waiting for a liver." Well, I'm hoping I can get a million more people on that list uh, within my first year in the Senate, and I'm tr- trying hard to do that. I'm trying to get that the app that the government has to make it easier for people to sign up as donors. I want a thing called a uh, Opt in plus, where you go on the, the waiting, you go on the uh, the donors list rather, and uh, and it's a living will that your family cannot overrule you on. At the moment, more than forty percent of people are on the donors list. Uh, their organs aren't used because their families, in their understandable grief, the families pull the pin. More than forty percent of those organs go into the hospital trash baskets. 